Hello everyone. So today I am talking to you about your marriage, of course, but today we're going to talk about covenant. Covenant. It's really important and the Lord has been showing me um, and bringing this word to my remembrance a lot. Covenant. It's a contract. It's a it's a connection between two people. It's something that is somewhat of a truce, right? When we think of covenant, we think of like contract and papers and that. So marriage is a covenant, but it's more than just paper. This is something that you've established between you, your husband, and God. So today I want to share with you over in the book of Malachi. It's Malachi chapter chapter uh, 2, verse 13. And it says, And this have ye done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, and with crying out, insomuch that he regardeth not the offering any more, or receiveth it with good will at your hand. Yet ye say, Wherefore? Because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. And did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the spirit, and wherefore one? That he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hath hated putting away. So that would be divorce. For one covereth violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit, that ye deal not treacherously. Ye have wearied the Lord with your words, yet ye say, Wherein have we wearied him? When ye say, Everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delighteth in them. Or where is the God of judgment? So this is a lot of, it's pretty wordy, but basically God is saying, you know, I'm sick of tired of you calling something bad good, something good bad. You're breaking your covenant and you're acting like it's no big deal, even though I told you I hate divorce. That's what God is saying here to Malachi. And he's speaking mainly to the men who are primarily the ones that are supposed to be maintaining the covenant. But it is the job of the wife and the husband to maintain a covenant relationship before God because that's who our vows are towards. They're towards our husband or our wife, our spouse, but they're made in the sight of God. So when we look at covenant, it's about making one. I did a whole study um, that uh, years ago on YouTube um, about covenant and what that means. Basically, when you shed blood um, before God, it's a covenant thing. That's why he used the blood of goats and bulls, animals, to make a covenant. If you said, I vow to do something, and you shed blood over that thing, that was considered a covenant, and God respects that. So when a husband and wife come together, usually if a woman is a virgin, her hymen is not broken. So when that breaks, blood is shed, there's a covenant between a man and a woman, between a man and his virgin. And that becomes a covenant before God. It's not on paper, it's through the blood. Come on somebody, I'm going somewhere. So when you make that between you and God, right? It becomes a covenant relationship. So Jesus shed his blood on the cross and made a way for a covenant between us and God. Same, that's how one way in which Christ is like his church how our marriages are like Christ and the church because blood is shed to establish that covenant. And so the second verse I want to give you here is Romans chapter 1 and it is verses 28 through 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, bolsters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Hello, wow, worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. This verse 
has been convicting to me many times over verse 32 because when you have pleasure in something that hurts God's heart, that's a problem. Because not only are you not supposed to do it or encourage others to do it, but you're not supposed to take pleasure in watching others do it. Sounds like TV, sounds like radio, sounds like music, sounds like a lot of things where people glorify the things that shouldn't be glorified in the eyes of God. So today, this week, I want you to be thinking about your covenant. Have you broken it? Do you need to reestablish it? Do you need to repent? Do you need to stop encouraging other people to break their covenants? Or do you need to perhaps think about not indulging yourself and being entertained by people that are breaking their covenants? It's heavy. Ask God to convict you where you need to be convicted and make that change. Have a discussion with your mentor or mentee this week. And I'll